Welcome to another episode of Unscripted. Um, on this morning's show, this one blew my mind. It was honestly tough to be able to write down all of the points that uh, Proverbs 10 had. Uh, if you just joined us in this particular episode, for the last uh, four, go back and see the last four. We started at Proverbs 6. We're going to go through Proverbs 31, and then uh, then I'll start it again at Proverbs 1 through 5. Um, but what I wanted to do is take you through the corresponding proverb, corresponding day, because this has really uh, shifted things uh, for myself. I've been doing this on and off for the past 30 years. And so uh, disclaimer is I'm not a Bible scholar, uh, but these are my opinions. These are not things that uh, I think that are law and concrete, but I can tell you this, it has been unbelievable and transformative to be able to go through the book of Proverbs, not from just, uh, not from a religious standpoint, but from a relationship standpoint. Religion, uh, meaning that you're trying to do a bunch of rituals to get to a point or get someone's attention, and a relationship is simply being present exactly where you're at, and that's what I want to be able to do uh, every single day. And people ask me all the time, what are your goals? for 2024. What my goals are is to do God's will each and every day. And the only way that I could do that is to be in touch with him. So again, welcome to another uh, episode of Unscripted. Let's get this party started. Welcome back. Uh, another episode of Unscripted. I can't believe it's episode 324. Um, again, my intention is just to be able to take you through Proverbs. We want to hit some bullet points. Today we have six points uh, that we want to hit, and let's dive right in. Proverbs 10 is probably one of the toughest for me to be able to break down because every single thing is a nugget. And what I would suggest is honestly take your time and read this particular proverb, it's 32 verses, and it is rapid fire. Point one is I'm going to give you the breakdown of all the things that it talks about. Number one, it talks about wisdom, and it shows you exactly how to be able to harness wisdom and the, the consequences if you don't choose wisdom. Number two is joy. Uh, it's not um, just the word joy, but it's talking about the way that you are able to impart joy, which is falling in love with your current circumstances and allowing magic to happen as opposed to chasing happiness, which is circumstantial. If you're chasing happiness, you'll go high, you'll go low. But with joy, it doesn't matter the circumstance. It just matters how you react to it. Um, talks about righteousness, talks about diligence, which is right work, uh, prudence, being able to pop back a little bit, set back. And this is a thing that I've had to learn over the years. Um, it talks about integrity, love, discernment. But again, what I want to emphasize, these 32 verses, these 32 verses that it has in this particular chapter, every single one of them is a bomb. There's two sentences in each verse, and one of them talks about say wisdom. And then it talks about the, uh, you know, foolishness underneath it. it talks about joy and what happens when you don't uh, choose joy. It talks about righteousness. What happens when you don't choose righteousness, diligence, when you choose laziness, prudence, when you, uh, are in a hurry, in a rush, integrity, when you don't choose integrity, love, when you don't choose that and discernment, when you don't choose that. So 32 verses, it is rapid fire. And I, 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 implore you, I ask and I plead, um, take some time and listen to this. Point number two is that it use righteous, it use righteous or righteousness 13 times in 30, uh, 32 verses. And so 
when it talks about this um, righteousness, at, at first, a lot of times, uh, you know, people especially um, that get offended in this think, oh, it's self-righteous. No, it's just righteousness means doing things the right way. Or my friend uh, Gary Spellman would say, simply do the right thing. He told me he was going to write a book and it was just going to have one sentence and it was going to have one page and it was going to have a nice leather cover. And you know what it was going to say? Do the right thing. The end. Because that could be the guiding light. Let's jump into uh, uh, point number two and a half, motion versus action. And this was amazing because in verse four, it talks about this. Let me go to it. So in verse four, it says, lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Very simple. It's the difference between motion and action is the difference of diligent work. Diligent work is right work. It's being right in line with your purpose. And when you're right in line with your purpose and you're doing exactly what you need to do, as opposed to just being busy all the time. And I think that I fall into this. Uh, number three is uh, do the right thing, which is verse nine and verse 16. So in verse nine, uh, whoever walks in integrity, walks securely. Whoever takes a crooked path will be found out. In verse 16, it says, the wages of the righteous is life, but the earnings of the wicked are sin and death. Do the right thing. Point number four um, is verse 24, and we'll go to that. Verse 24, what the wicked dread will overtake them, what the righteous desire will be granted. And watch this. Point number four is whatever you focus on will become your reality. How many times have we heard that in the personal development realm? How many times have we heard, like, uh, you know, the secret, uh, you know, whatever you focus on, uh, you'll draw to you. Well, guys, not to say that that's a bad thing and the secret is a bad thing and personal development is a bad thing. It's great. It's amazing. But go to the root. Go to the root. Go to where it came from. All of these things, every single book that I've read, and I was sharing with my uh, men's group yesterday, is every single book that I've read, I've been able to track right back to Proverbs at some point or another. Point number five is your heart. Uh, when your heart is right, you will flourish. That's verse 28. And so in verse 28, it says, the prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing. When your heart is right, you will flourish. When you put your heart into something, things tend to work out and people say, oh, wow, the magic happened. It wasn't that. It was the fact that your heart was in it. But how can you, oh, how can you know what to choose and what's right for you? We go back to it, the fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom will bring knowledge, knowledge, understanding, understanding, insight, insight, discretion, discretion, discipline, discipline, strength, and that will bring you back to the fear or respect of God. So uh, point number six, and this is where we finish, guys. Uh, again, it was rapid fire and it was quick, but uh, verse uh, 29 through uh, 32. Watch this. Righteousness plus wisdom equals exponential gain. And we're not talking about gain monetarily. We're not talking about just that prosperity gospel. But what I am saying is that when you do the right thing and you choose wisdom, which is the fear of God, right? Right? When you take those two things and put them together, there's, no, there's nothing that could stand in the way. There's nothing that could stand in the way of God's will in your life because God's will will be done because you will have chosen to respect him. He will give you wisdom. And when he gives you wisdom, he'll give you knowledge, understanding, insight, discretion, discipline, strength, which will bring it back to that, bring it back to the respect to God. And what will happen is you'll start to have and do the right thing. So I implore you today, um, you know, uh, I always say this uh, as, a, as a joke, but jokingly serious, you know what to do. We know what to do as humans, um, but a lot of times we don't listen to that voice. That voice is God calling each and every one of us to righteousness. And righteousness is just spending time with him. And when you spend time with him, not through uh, religion, not through rituals, not through all these things, a, just a personal relationship with him, then you'll start to hear his voice. Proverbs 10, wisdom, joy, righteousness, diligence, prudence, integrity, love, discernment. Imagine how that could affect your business, your relationships, and your life.
Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in to Unscripted. I have had a phenomenal time doing this. I'm going to continue doing it. Keep tuning in. Thank you so much for rocking with the podcast. Each and every one of you has been incredible. If you want to see the podcast live, it is the Vibe Room, and we're going to be releasing the dates, which is July uh, in July in Salt Lake City. And also, if you want a little bit more in-depth, Join the Vibe community. The link is in the bio. Thank you so much for being on Unscripted. I appreciate you. Peace, love, and soul. I'm officially off the hot seat.